By the end of the evening, we will have reached the halfway point in the round of 32, and eight players will have advanced on to the round of 16. This is the WCS Europe Premier League Season 2. Welcome. My name's Kyle Aris, alongside once again with my fellow Brit, Mr. Sean Apollo Clark. And let's take a look at our 32 players that have been representing thus far. That's right, we've had a great tournament so far, and as you said, we're approaching the halfway mark. We've concluded with Group A, Group B, and Group C, and today, we'll be focusing heavily on Group D, of course. Next week, remember, Tuesday and Wednesday, every single week for the next two weeks, we'll be broadcasting Tuesday, Wednesdays at mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Central European Summertime. And let's take a closer look at the players that have already advanced. We in Group A, we have MVP and Tefel. Group B, Stefano and MC. And Group C, finally, from yesterday, MMA and Mana advancing on through. Mana causing a little bit of an upset. That's right, man. TLO, unfortunately, a tournament favorite, or not tournament favorite, group favorite, should I say, got knocked out. So far, if you did notice, two players from each race Omar, so far have made their way through. It's pretty good, pretty balanced. Yeah, not done too badly for themselves, but now moving on to today, we have our four players on the way for you here in the form of Demaga, Daishi, Hasu, Obs, and Duck Duck. A very, very varied spread there of their current WCS rankings, I should think. That's right, and if we look at Demaga, first of all, he's currently rank 15. And that's a pretty high rank. He's mm -hmm. one of three non-Koreans in the top 16 that, of course, remember, the top 16 will play a tournament at the end of the year at BlizzCon. Demaga must focus today on advancing into the round of 16 to continue his rise and to continue to bring in the WCS points. On the other hand, though, we do have a couple of other players in this group today. Daishi, the young and fierce French player that's really been up and coming over the last couple of months, an aggressive Terran player looking to make his mark today. He's been performing very well online. He's in the hot seat today because once again, this is online, a little bit shaky offline, but if he passes today, that's where he can worry about that. And then of course we have the consistent, the German number one, most recently winning the EPS Germany. We'll see how well he can do outside the German scene. And then finally, last but not least, Duck Duck, AKA MVP Finale. Some of you may know him from playing in Code A. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Codes last year in 2012. But he comes in today after struggling to make it to where he is today in a very similar circumstance to his teammate Tails who played yesterday and didn't quite make it through. We'll see if he can make it to the round of 16. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Duck Duck. He is one of the uh, least represented Koreans in, in terms of how he's well performed previously. But here we have our structure. As you can see, the winners will play winners after the first round. Uh, the losers from those first games will fall down to the lowers to battle out for the opportunity to play the loser from that winner's fight for that opportunity at that second round of 16 spot. So now, with that done, we have our the second match, actually, will be uh, Daishi versus... Daishi versus somebody. <laughs> I've gone completely blank. That's okay. It's going to be Daishi going up yeah, against Hazu Obs in the first game down there. Yep. And then, of course, the second game will be... Well, the first game will first be game. that one. So there's our four uh, players. Uh, the first one, as we see on screen here, is going to be Demaga versus Duck Duck. Duck Duck MVP finale. So this guy, you should remember from previously in the GSL last year. We'll see how well he's going to perform today. Duck Duck, I, I mean, he came into WCS. Uh, he is, right now, the youngest player coming into yes. the WCS. Yes. Season 2, who was a part of the GSTR winning team back in 2011, and he actually never really put a good consistent string of results together. And now he's trying to, you know, bring that success over to Europe. Had a difficulty time, a very difficult time, trying to make it to the Premier League mm. the first season, playing a four out of four qualifiers, failing in each one, unfortunately, and only narrowly today making it into the Premier League. But he'll be going up in his first game against, well, a third and fourth place finisher from Season 1, currently ranked 15 in WCS points, represented Europe at the Season 1 finals. And as we mentioned before, this guy has to perform today. He needs to keep those points up to keep up with Stefano and TLO and to keep away other players, especially ones that are performing well in other regions, from catching up to rise into the top 16. And I suppose we should talk about his new sponsor since that Season 1 performance. He is now sponsored by Team Rocket and will now represent them for the first time in the WCS Europe Premier League. It's very important that he performs well. If he drops down here, then that means he doesn't have any access to any more points during the Premier League, at least. And that's big, big points that he definitely needs. Uh, we'll be jumping into the first game very, very soon. It's going to be Belshia Vestige. But Demaga, in Season 1 for him, a lot of it began with... 
in essence, defeating MVP. And yeah. then it came full circle at the very end where he was defeated by MVP during that, those final moments. So uh, it was... It was, it was a roller coaster for Damaga in season one. Yeah, I mean, if you look back at season one, funnily enough, his first game was against a Korean and his second game was against a German, which is a very high possibility to happen once again here in season two. We'll see how things are going to shape up. We are going to be jumping into the first game, a best of three, remember, as the format was explained before, the winners of both series going up against each other to claim the first place spot within Group D. And by the end of the night, we will have completed the halfway mark of the round of 32 moving on to next week where we'll be getting on to the second half. Sounds good, sounds good. So let's jump in very, very soon here to Belshire Vestige for our PVZ, the first game of the night. Looking forward to this as every night for WCS is pretty darn awesome. And for Duck Duck, it's going to be difficult. The Magas looked pretty strong as of late, despite this is technically being his weakest matchup statistically. Um, it's It still should be all right for him. In fact, no, this is his strongest matchup statistically now that I think mm. about it. So, spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner here as our blue Protoss, we have our Korean representative, Mr. MVP Duck Duck. And spawning up to the top left as our red Zerg, we have Rocket Demaga. Demaga playing a very unique style when it comes to Zerg versus Protoss. And I really think that's where his strengths are going to rely against Duck Duck, who may not really have experienced how Demaga plays, who doesn't play similar to a Korean Zerg player, who definitely doesn't play similar to a lot of Europeans as well. The range of strategies that Demaga has, whether it be bailing drops, or it be a Ling into Ultralisk, mm. if he plays normally, even Mutalisk, he's known for using every single type of play and that's going to be his strength here just abusing the uh, the variation of styles that he has but on the other hand duck duck is always a player that likes to get dirty he loves his gateway expands he yeah. loves you know having the option very similar to demaga to choose from a range of different builds whether it be the follow-up four gateway push or just straight three gateway to stargate Options are available for both players, and I think that's going to make this series really entertaining. Yeah, we've had we've had a lot of gateway expands from Duck Duck in the past, be it from the Premier League qualifiers right through to Challenger. And for him, it, it's again, it's been a rocky road, as you well pointed out at the beginning of this. Sometimes he had great successes, but when it came to those pivotal moments in qualifying into Premier for Season 1, he just didn't hit the mark. Yep. And now, this is going to be, in essence, his first got his first PVZ throughout the actual seasons. He only played Terrans and Protosses in Challenger mm -hmm. and going into Premier. And we'll see how he's going to, you know, fear here today in this first game of the day. Demarga has always been, a, well, actually, I'd say one of the most consistent Zerg players that we've seen for a very long mm. time. Obviously not as hard-hitting as players like Stefano and Nurcio in their prime, but Demarga, I think every single year that he's played StarCraft II, has at least achieved a top three finish in 2010, 11, 12, and now 13. So I think, you know, he's he's posed to do well here once again in season two, hopefully, yeah, as long yeah. as things are looking good in terms of his practice regime. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because over the grand scope of things, Demaga, yes, definitely does have that consistency. There are some people that are speculative as to his, if you kind of, grab the microscope and look in a little bit recent times, saying that, well, Demagra in WCS Season 1, very, very good performances. But in between his games, he was a little bit shaky. Now, that was basically on the premise of Demagra focuses so heavily on WCS that he's not as bothered about the other tournaments. Everything for him is on this tournament. He knows how important it is. Yep, yeah, well, this tournament's the reason why he's got his points for the WCS ranking, yeah. currently sitting at rank 15. But if we look at the both builds so far, Duck Duck hasn't actually decided to scout whatsoever. Hmm. This is very common in recent times, just to focus very much so on what you're doing. You don't really care what your opponent's doing, because 9 to 9.5 <laughs> times out of 10, it's always just going to be a spawn and pull hatch or hatch first. It doesn't matter what. You're not really scared of an early pull. Actually, it helps you more that you don't scout against an early pull, because hmm. you have more resources. You're not really going to adapt to anything special. But as we see Duck Duck's build started to take shape, one gateway into an expansion, followed by a couple of extra gateways. But Demarga, on the other hand, with a very early evolution chamber. Mm. And what we see from this most likely is going to be a plus one melee attack range. This is something that I've seen him do many a time before, where he will most likely here 
be, I wouldn't be surprised if the thing I said earlier comes true, which is a bailing drop style. Yeah, well, we'll see if that does come to fruition here from Demaga. He has certainly a lot of options. There's that melee already on the way here for Demaga. Even getting creep spread between these two bases just to connect them up very, very yeah. swiftly and make sure he's a little bit more impenetrable uh, with if he wants to go for a little bit more of a heavier queen uh, defense at least. But mm. now with the forge on the way for Duck Duck. He's just playing this out stably. Damaga changed from plus one melee to Ooh. plus one carapace. The reason for that is because he saw three gateways and then saw the forge coming yeah. down. So upon seeing the forge, he knows now that plus one attack could very easily be researched and even chronoboosted out for some sort of uh, attack. Why, are the, why else would you get the forge, right? So it makes perfect sense for him to kind of adapt a little bit to his opponent's style. But he's definitely got a lot of zerglings being made in anticipation for this very same movement out. A little bit of poke out here for Doc Doc sees the there was just a queen there, not much else. We'll pull back with that mothership cop. Look at these positioning of the pylons right now, warping in a lot of stalkers as well here. So this four gateway pressure from yep. Duck Duck could cause quite a little bit of hindrance, but Damaga's already sniffed it out. He's assaulting the initial pylon. The stalkers. Well, he's gonna have to throw down another pylon in DS with a probe. Damaga stopped drone production very early, so there's actually no threat whatsoever. Even if a bunch of zealots mm. were made here, it's completely fine. He already has 14 zerglings out with another 30 on the way. This is going to have to be cancelled here eventually. Duck, duck, I can't aim to deal damage here. Now, Apollo, what do you... Uh, well, let me hold the phone there. As for now, the Zerglings do actually run in. Good surround there. And the force fields did come down kind of late. So these Zerglings, as well as the Queen, should be able to clean up the majority of this. Zealots come in from the back as well, trying to fend off the Zerglings. But in the end, Tamaga holding on very, very nicely. Crushing through this. I mean, the Zealots are going to do a good job here. So Demaga's going to have to pull back and just wait for a couple more links. But with 20 new ones on the way, this Queen is just about going to get on creep to be able to get away very close there. But with the reinforcements coming in as well, as plus one carapace down the line. Demaga, after these 20 links, should go back to drone production. He's fine from here on out. Yeah, that really shows the essence of that earlier creep spread here that we saw Demaga going for pretty, uh, pretty swiftly off the back of all of this. That's a lot of zealots, and they are in all right position, so they're not being as easily surrounded as they normally would have been done. So they're going to get an all right trade in the end. And with a few more warping in, he's going to have to get some more uh, zerglings out here for now. Even stalkers warping in to try and uh, continue with this assault. But ooh, he has to save that mothership core. I would call that a small mistake from Demaga not to wait for plus one carapace. If he'd mm. waited for that, he would have cleaned that up a lot easier. And we'll pull back again here with the Queens, trying to make sure that those Zealots are not able to connect. Another 22 Zerglings in production, but Duck Duck is not finished up with this four gate assault just yet. The only problem that I see for Duck Duck is behind this, what is he doing? He didn't even start any upgrades. No, he's stopped pro production. He's chronoboosting yeah. the gateways. It's like full on focus on this. But as I said, with the carapace down here, this gets easier and easier with Demaga, who's keeping up Queen production, be able to deal with this. He's got two extra Queens on the way. He's going to be able to transfuse across the Queens. This seems a very easy defense from Demaga, the Ukraine defending his home turf against the Korean Duck Duck. Yeah, Duck Duck having a hard time breaking Damaga here. I mean, Damaga comes in very, very prepared into WCS especially in comparison to uh, all the other tournaments. He takes this tournament very, very seriously and Duck Duck is being shut down. He can't even really do too much damage at this third, I don't think. The Stalker's almost got a queen, but that was it. Everything else that's being lost is just Zerglings for very expensive gateway units. There you go, GG. GG and Doug, Demago makes that look really easy, yeah. actually. So uh, one of the things that I just like to point out, which I didn't want to talk about while the heat was on, but the reason for the forge and for not actually getting an upgrade at that point was because he wanted to show two gateways on the front door to add on to the one in the main base. And when you get the forge like that, it usually means that a plus one attack will come but he didn't, he wasn't trying to show the fourth gateway. Mm. It's meant to be a replacement of the fourth gateway there, which is why the forge was down. But Demaga making that defense look really easy. And it's really down to, I'd say there, such an early evolution chamber, which he changed around from plus one melee to plus one carapace. That helped out a ton. Yeah, it really did. That was very, very impressive there from Demaga in game number one. It's the Demaga that we know from season one. Yeah. Uh, really coming out in style in that first game. And Duck Duck. As I said, I, I think in this group, Duck Duck's going to have a very hard time. Despite his his Korean yeah. heritage and despite him having a pretty good win ratio across all matchups, actually, um, it's going to be difficult for him because all the foreigners that we have currently representing are also looking pretty darn fantastic at the yeah, moment. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, when I look at this group and I look at Duck Duck, I find it very hard for him to move through, despite me actually wanting him to do well here, because I used to be such a fan of his play, who's, mm. you know, such a creative, aggressive, yet solid Protoss at the same time. But when I look at his play, especially within this group, going up against the manga is always going to be a difficult one. And I think that Daishi will be able to beat Hazuobs, which means if that was the case, it would be a PvP. And I'm pretty confident that Hazuobs would be able Ooh. to beat 
finale there, or should I say Duck Duck. So yeah. I think he's going to have a hard time in this group. The, the, the worst part about this is I can't help but feel sorry for Duck Duck and also Tails yesterday. The amount of effort games and late night, ni late night nights they had, <laughs> is another quote for you there, late night nights that he had to try to get into the Premier League. He's finally here, but this is the toughest part of them all, is to go up against Europe's finest here in players like Demago, You know, Daishi, a great up-and-coming Terran. It's not going to be easy for him at all. No, you're right. The Europeans, they don't roll over too easily. They really don't. They put up a great fight, and we already see here now Demago leading 1-0, to zero, but Duck Duck is the kind of player that can bring it back. He's had that hard road, as you said, and you can guarantee he's been practicing pretty darn hard for this as well. It means a lot to these players. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what, how this is going to work out. The next map is going to be Star Station. Not so much a favored map here for Protoss players. Going up against a player like Demago, especially, who loves heavy swarm style of usage. Is a player, not against Protoss as much, that doesn't... He, I say against Terran, he probably likes to rush up to Hive a little bit more. But against mm -hmm. Protoss, man, he loves lots of units. And that's great on a map like Star Station. Really is. And spawning down to the bottom right-hand corner here as our blue Zerg. Currently one game up. He is Rocket Demaga. And spawning up to the top left as our red Protoss needs to bring it back. He is MVP Duck Duck. We'll see if he can bring it back here. He's going to have to put all of the effort that he put into, you know, getting a spot in Premier League into this next series because it's going to get more and more difficult, especially if he loses this 0-2. And we'll see if that's possible. Of course, the game has been observed by Icicle, so thank you very much for doing our observing. Saves me and Claris doing it. Yeah. Um, really does save me and Claris doing it. <laughs> it's very, very useful indeed. And now we shall see here if Demaga can employ that swarmy style that you mentioned prior. Mm -hmm. Uh, that has suited him very, very nicely on this map in even season one of the WCS. We saw a phenomenal game from him in a different matchup uh, against MVP in the round of 32 on this map, where he was able to crush MVP. So now going up against Duck Duck after that game one. I mean, where does Duck Duck go from here, Sean? Does he try and play our macro game on a map that can be difficult to do? I think that that what he'll do in this game, if I'm going to guess anything, even though I tried to guess his teammate yesterday and I was always wrong, uh, I suggest man. going for like a one gateway expand, which he's doing clearly, into three gateway total, not adding on three, just into Stargate and play it from there. He's got to play a straight up game here. We saw Tails attempt aggressive game after game after game yesterday, and it just did not work. I believe that, you know, Duck Duck is going to have to rely much more on macro and just big fights rather than small micro intensive ones. Mm. Demaga is going to win that every time. Yeah, he's already shown that he's very, very capable of actually dealing with those kinds of things. And Demaga, for now, he's just going spawning pool into hatch. Wait, he went hatchery into spawning pool. Yeah, hatchery so. spawning pool, same as game one here. Yeah. Uh, and not afraid of any early forge plays whatsoever. Demaga is quite good at dealing with uh, cannon rushes if they were to come, but. How often really do we see an early forge for an early cannon rush? Mm. Not that often. Just calculated risk came also from Demago. Yeah, especially against a player like Duck Duck, who's already exhibited so much gateway expansion play in this yes. matchup. Uh, technically for Duck Duck, this is his second best matchup uh, in terms of Heart of the Swarm performances, sitting around a 70% win ratio, 69-70% win ratio, which is very, very good for him. But a lot of that was spent in the, uh, <laughs> in the Premier qualifiers going through uh, the earlier rounds, so he hasn't met that many higher caliber players thus far as Demaga, and Demaga's certainly giving him a run for his money right now. Absolutely, Demaga's going to make this difficult. He's he, like we mentioned, he beat MVP last time in the round of 32, and he can very easily beat Duck Duck. I think though, if Demaga didn't advance through today, it would be very weird considering that we lost Tilo, who finished fifth place yeah. yesterday. I think it would be very weird if we didn't see Demaga, who finished third to fourth place last season also get knocked out. I think that would be a weird thing to see. So I'm expecting Demaga to make his way through for sure today, whether it be losing this first game and winning the next two or winning this one and cruising from there. No, you're right. If we lost two of our highest finishers in WCS season one, that would uh, be a little bit sad for some of the fans out there. But um, we shall see now as Duck Duck is on 
on route to try and challenge Damaga, but again, a tough time ahead of him. He's just going for the double gateways at the front once again. What is he going to do Ooh, from here? It's going to be Robo. So a robotics facility coming down. This very easily narrows his options down to just a couple of things here. It's either going to be an Immortal Colossus push together as one, or he's going to try and take a quite early third base defending with Immortal and a bunch of gateway units. Mm. But I wouldn't put it past him to go for the Immortal push. Yeah, we certainly could do that, and especially with that forge going down now. Do you I, do you think he's actually just going to go for that plus one weapons this time and yeah. uh, call his bluff? Well, not exactly call his bonus bluff, but just make it work. Yeah, I think he'll go plus one with this forge for sure. Um, yeah. Tamargo, on the other hand, has got his plus one carapace down again this time. With plus one melee, that's definitely more so focused on being aggressive with his units. With the carapace, it's a, it's a defensive. You know, it's carapace. It's defensive. It's going to increase his army here, so he's looking to accept an assault if that was to come again. Which is going to work out well for him, considering it is an Immortal First being made. It's been kind of boosted out. We should see plus one attack being uh, um, researched as well in a second to start to increase his unit count. Maybe move out with a plus one attack and plus one armor. Mm. Depends where the chrono boost goes, but either way, it's aggressive. Now, the question is, is how quickly is Maga going to detect this? And then mm. when he does, there's a lot of room on Star Station to eventually catch your opponent whilst he's traversing across the map. There's so much potential to actually catch them if they want to go for that kind of play. He's hiding the first of all, uh, just a little bit at least. Second one's now on the way as well. Yeah, second one is now on its way. Uh, Tamaga did build a bunch of Zerglings really early on. He's actually increasing it again. Hmm. He's only at 38 drones. For example, if we were to see a very defensive play from Duck Duck, who waited till Colossus to take his third, Tamaga wins. I mean, uh, Tamaga loses his entire army. There's no point having them. But what is expecting here is two things. A early third being taken or an assault hmm. being launched. Both of them means a lot of units is very good against that. If we were to see slower paced game from Duck Duck, then this is obviously very bad for Demaga, who's hurting his economy majorly. But look at this, a movement out, which is spotted immediately by the Overlord. What we probably will see from Demaga, because he's got so many lings, is a counterattack with one force and yeah. defense with the other. Yeah, he has well-positioned lings over to the left-hand side to actually go for that counterattack if he wants to. Uh, it's uh, maybe not, because it is walled off now, so it might, yeah. may not be the best thing. Yeah, especially since he can see that with the Overlord as well. It gives him full uh, detection as to whether or not he can actually make that work out. Pylons are going to try and litter the map across. There was already one probe out on the field to throw some of those down, and Demaga's going to have to position himself well. He does have plus one carapace, so it's going to negate the plus one weapons, uh, at least on the Zealots for now. All right, just watch this. He's going to get completely surrounded, and I think Duck Duck's just going to lose the game. Yeah, I think that might happen as well. Not too bad force fields, though. Do pin a lot of those units in, but in the end, there's some Zergling still sealed in there. Tries to recall oh. away the Mothership Core. Oh, it died. Yes, it died. No recall available. Oh. GG. <laughs> Clean and simple. Demaga says, <coughs> Europe region. <coughs> Europe region. And uh, MVP finale, a.k.a. Duck Duck, or Duck Duck, a.k.a. MVP finale, goes down to the loser match very easily here. Demaga, wish wash. Wiping his opponent out. He cruised through, man. These uh, MVP Protosses so far not having the best time. Uh, but Duck Duck, he still has another chance. He goes down to that lower bracket. And now he's going to face off against either Daishi or Hasuobs. Either way, it's, it's going to be difficult for him. Because both of them, again, all the three foreigners in this group are at a very, very strong level right now. Very strong indeed. Yeah, I mean, Demarga is a third and fourth place finisher from season one. He went to the Season 1 Finals, and now he's defending his ground. Of course, he's going to be the one looking to move through here. Finale, like teammate yesterday, Tails, did not bring the caliber that everyone's expecting from players on such a team like MVP. So, you know, he's got to step it up. He, the, yep, his loser's match to. game, he has to. Otherwise, he's just going back down to Challenger League. It's a difficult road to get back in once again. We'll see. We shall, as uh, we'll be joining you after the break in just a little bit, guys, when we shall have Daishi playing against Hasuobs.